The area that I'm renovating is right by my ga back gate and right next to the places where all the services come in, where all the wires are. So I had to be very, very careful not to dig up wires and also the irrigation pipes. In now, the edging that I'm using is very simple plastic edging. It is six inches deep and it's really important that you have some kind of edging to prevent the zoysia grass uh, from growing into your bed. And it's important for it to be at least six inches deep to prevent those little tendrils going in. Now some people who have landscapers work for them will have uh, cement or brick uh, around your, your, uh, the beds. If you're doing this yourself, you can very cheaply get some plastic edging and insert it yourself. It just involves a little bit of digging and hard sweat. So I've done the edging around here and I'm ready to continue with the landscaping. So I place the landscape fabric all over the bed. Now it's really important to have landscape fabric and landscape fabric that breathes so that the soil uh, is kept alive. If you put solid black uh, plastic, the soil dies. Now not, not many people know that the soil is alive, but it is alive. It has worms and bacteria and fungi that all help to keep a plant healthy. Uh, you need to have healthy soil to have a healthy plant. I've uh, cut a, a square in the landscape fabric and dug a hole beneath it and removed a whole lot of the, of the soil. Now it is very sandy here, so I have added some good garden soil and if you're really lucky and have compost or manure, uh, add that too. Now as I have added that at the bottom, I've also put in some bone meal. Uh, just sprinkled some bone meal across the uh, and through the soil. That is excellent for stimulating root, root growth for a new plant. Now in a sandy and clay, clay soils, I also score the side of the, um, of the, the trench, score it, um, make sort of deep lines in it so that the roots can go through and spread out. Now I'm ready to plant this plumbago and take it out of its pot. It's been in the pot for quite a long time. So I'm expecting it to be root bound and it was a fairly distressed plant when I, when I got it and I've uh, taken care of it and it's ready to be planted. I'm going to see what it looks like when I open it up. doing I'm checking to see if it's root bound that means if the roots have been in that pot for a long time and they've rotated and sort of uh, clogged up the bottom now it's important not to plant a plant that's been root bound if there are a lot of uh, roots that are flattened or circling around this doesn't seem to be too bad oh no there's quite a mat of roots at the bottom so what I'm going to do I mean, it looks quite drastic, but I'm going to basically root prune, take out some of these roots that have been circling. You see, this is really long, and it had nowhere to go, so it was going in a circle. So I'm just going to cut it off a bit, just like pruning the top part of the plant. If you prune the roots, it stimulates them to grow um, better and to spread out into the, ground, into the uh, soil. So this actually doesn't look too bad. So going to plant it now. Here is the planted plumbago. It's a very small bush at this point and it will get to be quite wide and quite tall. So I put it at the corner of the house here with some space for it to expand. And around the, uh, the base of the plant I put uh, um, some bark mulch, some red bark mulch. Now some people use stone. I prefer to use bark because it is less expensive and also it is less hot on the plant. Um, the stone tends to absorb a whole lot of heat. It's very beautiful and it stays in place for a long period of time. The bark mulch moves around a little bit, but it is easier to move if you want to move a plant. So this is my choice for an inexpensive and easy to use mulch. So here is a new planting using bark mulch with young plants at the side of a house. These will expand 
and fill in the space quite nicely.